Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome to my channel where I teach you how to code. NFT contracts are very cool, and at some stage you might have minted an NFT by clicking on this mint button, interacting with a contract. Let's say we wanted as developers of an NFT collection to have that price of the NFT be dynamic as the mint progresses. Let's see how we can achieve this. Before we jump in the code, I would like to make an announcement and say this is my very last video for the year 2021. It's been an amazing year, an amazing journey, getting to know this whole community who started following my path in teaching people how to create generative art and put it on the blockchain. Throughout my journey, I had the most amazing experiences getting to know awesome people along the way. I would like to get to know each and every one of you, so for the festive season, you know, watch these videos, leave me comments and leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't. I do appreciate that very much. The code section that we are going to adapt today, teaching you guys how to do dynamic pricing, is going to come from the Sketchy 8 Book Club collection, which is a collection that just dropped. Now, if you want to be a part of it, feel free and go ahead and check out our community by going to this website. Make sure it is sketchy ape and not apes. It needs to be exactly this sketchy ape book club.com. The reason why I say that is people have been copying us because they love our collection so much. You can see from the trades happening, the owners, we recently launched and it's going great. So we are actually going to duplicate this contract, change it up and see how we can now include dynamic pricing when people mint. To start off, what you can do is click on the contract over there, then you'll get to the section where you can see actually the token tracker, but most important, you can see the contract here below. When you click on it, you can see the code section shows the exact contract that's being used. Now we can go ahead and copy it all by clicking on this button over there. Once it's copied, Head over to remix.ethereum.org, which is in a great online kind of IDE for Solidity programming, a compiler. Once we're here, you can simply click on this plus icon and create a new workspace. This will provide us three default Solidity contracts, but we are now going to create our own. I'm going to right click, say new file, and this time I'm going to call this nft.sol. Once I have that, I can open it up and then go and paste all the code that I just copied from that previous contract. You should see all this and if everything went well, you should see a green tick box here on the compiler section. Let's jump back to our file and then just make sure that we have our NFT contract selected. Go up here and please remove the SABC stuff that you see here if you decide to play around with this contract. The only reason why you need to remove the references is because you do not want to have a clone of an existing project, which is our project. So also on a side note, please don't use this code directly. Do your own research, your own due diligence by following up, doing tests on your contracts that you deploy. Because as you know, this is the wild, wild west of the NFT world. And you need to make sure that each and every contract that you deploy on the blockchain is secure. What you can do now is just scroll down to the bottom section where we have the main NFT contract starting, which is right about here. So this, when you see this, you know that everything from here downwards is the contract that we can adapt, change, and then see how we can make the price be dynamic. For those people who want to actually see how these contracts are built up from scratch, I do have videos out for that, so go and watch that. And also, if you want to perfect your skill in Solidity, I've got a great beginner Solidity course. We are only going to be focusing on how to make the cost dynamic. This is the cost of our NFT. And usually we have a function that we can set the cost at. But how do we do that based on the minting ID of where the collection is currently in progress of minting? In this specific contract, we have a max supply. But if you scroll down, you'll see that there's two mint functions, one for the public and one for the owner. The one for the public is so that you at least leave 50 for the owner left. But for now, I'm going to replace this with the max supply, and then I'm going to remove this function altogether. The reason why I want to do that is to keep the contract simple 
so that we can focus on this very part where it requires the cost to be of a certain value. When an NFT mint takes place, users call this function, specifying the amount of NFTs they want to mint. They also supply a value of Ether that they send to the contract, whether it is now uh, Matic in Polygon Chain or Ether in Ethereum, doesn't matter. But we check the supply, we check the contract is not paused, then we also check that the mint amount is greater than zero, as well as less than the max mint amount allowed per transaction. We make sure that this all complies and fall under the max supply amount so that we don't over mint and then we go ahead and we check if the value is provided and is sufficient for minting the amount of NFTs. Once all those conditions are met we have a for loop that simply iterates over the mint amount and then use the underlying safe mint function to send that NFT to the owner's wallet basically associating it with the owner's wallet and then the minting function is done. The intersection that I would like to do is currently do a function that will check the cost and if it needs to be updated on every mint. Now there are a few ways we can do this but I'm going to do this in a separate function. I think it's nice to separate functions for their functionality that they um, you know that they need to execute. So let's go ahead and create a function and we can simply create it right here at the top of the mint function. To write a function, we start off with the function keyword. Then we need to supply it with a name. I'm going to call this maybe need to update cost, like so. And I know this might be a long descriptive name, but I'm just going to take it as it is. We're going to say need to update cost. We can make this function internal. And the reason why I want to, to make it internal, because we don't need to call it publicly outside of this contract. This is going to be an internal function. We can also maybe supply it the supply because technically we need to know at which minting phase we are at in order to create some kind of if statement to set our cost. Now we can maybe add this in here as a parameter. So let's specify UN256 and call it the supply. Once we have this, we know that we can pass the supply when we use this need to update cost function right about here. So we will execute it here and then we will supply it with the supply like so. I have to mention, I do not know why, but every time I type something, the screen flashes, which is super weird. But anyway, I guess it's the compiler trying to compile it the whole time. So maybe we can also switch off auto compile and try type. It still does that. So I'm going to leave this on and we will just proceed like this. Anyway, we need to now update the cost. If we look at here, the cost at the top, we are already setting it to a default of 0.08 ether. Let's say we want to start off with 0.04 ether and then increment it as the supply gets minted out. While we are here, I'm going to set the max supply to 10. This is done so that we can test our smart contract. Also, before we continue, here where we do a require statement, let's also add a nice message. I'm going to say not enough funds, like so. We can now update the code in the need to update cost function. So what we can start off by doing is doing an if conditional statement to say, if the supply is less, let's say, than three NFTs, we want to do something. And the thing that we want to do is update the cost. Now we can update the cost variable, but that will be quite costly now that I think about it because we're going to update the state of the blockchain. Let's rather return something. So I'm going to type out that this returns a uint256. In the if statement, we can simply now say this return to us the 0.04 ether, which in turn will return to us a value in way. Just keep that in mind. That's why this ether keyword is there. But this is going to be the value that's being returned and we get a warning because this simply says that we can make this function pure. And here at the return, we can simply say that we want it to return the cost with a underscore. So now we have our function and what this will do is update the cost based on a supply. We can also go ahead and now say, well, if our NFT is also less than maybe six, we're going to make the price double and so on. 
we can even say if it's now eight, then we're going to make it maybe one. So just clean your code up. I know Remix doesn't do the best job of cleaning up code, but it looks nice and tight, so we need to do it like this. Keep in mind that we might need to use the max apply at this point, because we need to also facilitate that we have a max apply, so maybe the best would be if it's less or equal to the max apply. While we are doing this, we can now go ahead and actually take this off from pure, because now it's not a pure function anymore. We need to include the max supply, otherwise the last one won't have any price associated to it, and it will be free. Next, we can take this function that we've now written, go down to where it's being used over here, and actually call it, instead of having it there, we can call it in the place of this cost. So we can put it there, and there we go. Now this should be dynamic cost. But I also want to warn you guys that this is code that I've just came up with, so Please test this out. We are going to test it out now, but please test it out for yourself. This line over here should make the cost dynamic now. But in blockchain, it's always good to put a fail safe. So maybe a good idea would be to put an if statement even here and ba basically reference it of a variable. Let's say you go here at the top, maybe add a new variable and call it dynamic cost like so. Then you can be basing this off the boolean variable and say only if it's dynamic cost you should be checking that require statement. Otherwise you should just take the normal cost in consideration and this is good as a fail safe for if you want to have your contract solid. That being said I'm not going to implement the fail safe now it's basically a if else statement. If you're having trouble go and join our discord group and just ask around sure people will help you out there. I want to quickly test this contract because we need to see if we've now created some kind of dynamic cost. So what we can do is actually check we have one error and it says this can be restricted to a view function. So let's turn this to a view function. Always listen to the compiler. It most of the time tells you what's wrong. Once this is done, you should see a green tick. And we can actually go here to the compiler, make sure that this is enabled to auto compile. I'm also going to enable optimization. Then in the deploy and run transaction section, we can go ahead and now select our contract address. We need to select our contract over there, and then we can provide it with a few information bits and pieces. I'm simply going to just uh, type anything in here. Please watch the original video so that you know what to enter in these fields. But I just want to get this contract up and running so that we can start minting and testing if our dynamic price system works. To test our contract, we need to unpause it because it's paused from the beginning. So in the pause section, what we can do is turn this to false. As the owner, this will be successful and now we can start minting. Let's try and mint one right off the bat and say we want one NFT and click on mint. It simply fails and it says we do not have enough funds. We know for a fact that we need to provide a 0.04 ether amount for us to mint. So let's go ahead and do so. To get the correct amount of way, we can use this converter. So I'm going to enter 0, or 0, 0.04 ether and then copy the way amount. I'm gonna head back to Remix and then paste it in there as my value. So now that I've got my 0.04 ether in way, I can click on mint and boom, successful. I can do this again by supplying 0.04. Let's go ahead and mint. It was successful again. We can scroll down and look at the total supply and currently we have two. Let's go ahead and mint one more. Going to supply the value and click on mint. It was successful. So now our supply is at three. So technically what should happen now is if I try and do this again, I won't be able to buy this NFT for 0 0.04, but instead I'll need to pay 0 0.08. Let's go and try it. I'm going to paste the amount there and hopefully this should fail. And indeed it does. It says not enough funds. So now let's go and up our value. 
to 0.08. I can copy that, go back to Remix, and see if I can mint for the new dynamic price. I can click on Mint, and yet it was successful. I can keep on testing and try to mint one again, this time for 0.08, same mint, it's successful, as well as do another one. And let's check it out. Again, success. Our total supply is now 6, and now I expect us to pay 0.1 Ether for a mint. So technically, this time I try and put in 0.08, it should not work. And it failed, not enough funds. So technically, we need to update this amount, and I'm going to simply do it here by providing this, and then saying mint, and there we go. Successful again. And there you have it. That's how simple it is to update a smart contract and put some dynamic features in it. Keep in mind, never ever just use code that you see me type out because I do do this on a live environment and as we speak and I create this video. But like I said, add those fail safes so you can make sure that your contract is upgradable and that it won't break. Next, I just want to say I hope you guys are enjoying this content so far. So give me a thumbs up if you do, if you forgot to do that. Or a comment, I really appreciate that as always. Lastly, I just want to say our collection is live. And if you guys want to go and check it out, make sure to do so. But only if you go to the correct web pages. Like I said, be careful about scams out there. We have a wonderful community currently with this collection. And go and collect your sketchy ape. They are revealed at this stage, so everyone minting gets to see their new sketchy ape, and I think these came out amazing. So, till next time guys, have an amazing Christmas, New Year, and I'll see you guys in year 2022.